Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at green-white tokens updated with Wilds of Eldraine, which introduced a bunch more token doubling enchantments to Arena, so it's the perfect time to dust off Reese the Redeemed as our commander. The 1 mana 1-1 one, one can pay 3 mana tap to make a 1-1 one, one token, or we can pay 6 mana instead to double all our creature tokens, so it doesn't take very many activations from Reese to completely overwhelm the opponent, and that's very much our game plan, make some cheap tokens, and then get to 6 mana, activate Reese and completely take over. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with the mana acceleration, featuring some new cards like Utopia Sprawl, as well as the Iron Crag as a new 2 mana ramp artifact. Then we continue with our cheaper token makers, as well as some of the more expensive ones that can make a ton of tokens all at once, and that's a great way to also potentially recover from a sweeper effect. And then next up we've got some of our finishers, such as a new Moonshaker Cavalry to join Crater Hoof Behemoth as an excellent way to close out the game on the spot and then we get to the most exciting part of the deck, which are the token doubling effects. So we've got five total now, including a few tutor effects to help find them. And then our last category includes a bit of removal, a few planeswalkers as well that can act as removal, but also potentially generate some creature tokens. And now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, we've got Mox Amber, which is perfect alongside a one mana commander, can play it and Mox Amber on turn one, still play another one drop afterwards, can lead to a very explosive start. And then we've got several mana creatures with Avacis Pilgrim, Delighted Halfling, Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, and Wilds of Eldraine also introduces Utopia Sprawl as an aura that can enchant one of our forests, so it is important to have enough forests in the deck to enable Utopia Sprawl, but then it's a great way to ramp out some of our more expensive spells. And then a Gala Greeters is pretty easy to enable in a tokens deck, especially if we can also make tokens during the opponent's turn. We can potentially make two treasures in one turn cycle, as well as potentially gain some life and pick up extra plus one counters. And Into the North can find a snow land and put it on the battlefield tapped. That's why we see all these snow covered basics in the mana base. Another payoff for snow lands is Search for Glory, potentially gaining some extra life. And then Wolf of Haven and Chance of Land making extra green can also be sacrificed late game to maybe make a 2 2 wolf token, and with all our token doubling effects, that can be quite impactful. And then we've got some 2 mana ramp artifacts Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone we're used to, but the Iron Crag is a newcomer, can also tap for colorless and potentially transform into an equipment if we play a legendary creature later in the game. And then a Cultivate can find two basics, put one in play. Harrow sacrifices a land to find two basics, put them on the battlefield untapped, so we can still tap them for mana. And then a Tireless Provisioner has excellent synergy with cards like Cultivate and Harrow and our Fetch Land, making treasure tokens with Landfall usually, although we can also choose food tokens if we need to gain life. And of course we've got plenty of token doubling effects in the deck to double those treasure tokens. And Mirari's Wake can also double our mana produced by our lands. Not the best synergy with our ramp artifacts or enchantments, but it's great with any ramp effect that puts additional lands on the battlefield, since that will essentially double up our mana, as well as giving our team a plus one plus one. And then Awaken the Woods is also excellent with Mirari's Wake, since it will generate X11 Forest Dryad tokens, which also count as lands, so they will get doubled by Mirari's Wake. And it's also very nice when our tokens can also make mana, because then it's easier to activate Reese's 6 mana ability, and that will generate even more mana on the following turn, so Awaken the Woods both a finisher as well as an early ramp card. And then we can take a look at some of our cheaper token makers, starting with Legion's Landing making a life-linking vampire token, and if we transform Legion's Landing it can also generate more mana, as it will flip into a land that can also make additional 1-1 life-linking vampires. We've got Raise the Alarm making two 1-1s at instant speed, Birth will eventually make an 0-4 wall token, but in the meantime also finds a basic planes to guarantee our next land drop. Got sampling migration, either making two one ones or four one ones if we pay six mana for it. Verdant Command can make two scrolls at instant speed that enter tapped and has a bit more utility as well. Join the Dance makes two one ones at sorcery speed, but can also be flashed back for five mana to do it once again. Voice of Resurgence, another recent addition, a two two creature, and when it dies, it leaves behind an elemental token whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures we control. So that elemental can very quickly get out of hand, and it's especially nice if we have one of our token doubling 
healing effects, either Reese or some of our enchantments, to double the elemental token. So ideally we can wait for Voice of Resurgence to die or maybe chum block after we get those token doubling effects in play. And then a Blade Splicer makes a 3-3 Golem token, and as long as we control it our Golems will have First Strike. Get three blind mice from Wilds of Eldrain, making a 1-1 mouse token. On chapters 2 and 3 we can copy any token in play, so it could be the mouse, but could also be a larger creature token or even a treasure token. And finally our creatures get plus one plus one and a vigilance until end of turn. And then wedding announcement, another classic, making several human tokens or potentially drawing extra cards until it flips into wedding festivity, giving our team plus one plus one. History of Benalia, a blast from the past, making a pair of knight tokens with vigilance and eventually pumping up our knights until end of turn as well. And then Battle for Brejagard will first make a Human Warrior token, then an Elf Warrior token, and then for each differently named token we control we get to make a copy, so that also rewards us for having lots of variety in our tokens. And then we continue with Battle Screech, which we can often flash back in the same turn where we cast it, by simply tapping three untapped white creatures we control, and that's pretty easy to do when making two 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying. There's Isika's Chariot making a pair of cat tokens, and when the vehicle attacks we can copy a token we control. Rabble Rousing has Hideaway 5, so we can potentially hide one of our expensive finishers. And then as soon as we get 10 or more creatures in play after triggering Rabble Rousing, we can cast that Hideaway card for free. And we can easily make additional 1-1s one with Rabble Rousing, since we get one Citizen token for each attacking creature. And then there's Tender Shoot Dried, making a Sapperling token in each player's upkeep, including the opponents. And if we reach the City's Blessing, which we get to pretty quickly, our Sapperlings will get plus 2 plus 2. Trostani makes a pair of lifelinking soldiers and gives a team plus one plus one as well. And then the triplets, another recent addition, a 3-3 trampler making a pair of copies of itself in the form of tokens. And then when any triplet dies, it gets to put a number of plus one plus one counters on the other triplets equal to its power. So we start out with three triplets. If we don't have any token doubling effects whatsoever, one of them dies. We end up with a pair of 6-6 six, six triplets and then potentially a 12-12 if any of them dies. But of course with any token doubling effects that can quickly get out of hand. And then Emirius Call we can play as a land or as a 7 mana sorcery making a pair of 4 4 angel tokens and making the rest of our team indestructible until our next turn. And Hornet Queen can also be a very nice way to get back on the board after a sweeper making 4 1 1 flying insect tokens with death touch and the queen itself 2 2 flying death touch as well. And then a March of the Multitudes has Convoke, so we can tap any number of untapped tokens we control to help cast it, and then creates X 1 1 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink, so this can easily get out of hand if we already have some tokens in play. Next up we get to some of our finishers, where we've got one of our Planeswalkers, Huatli, which can be used for its minus one ability, pumping up a single creature equal to the number of creatures we control, although I typically prefer using the plus one ability to build up Huatli's loyalty, often get with an ultimate range on the following turn, and then the minus eight gives us an emblem saying whenever a creature enters battlefield under our control we get to draw a card, and that's always a very nice. Then there's Cathar's Crusade, which is one of the most effective finishers in this deck, saying whenever a creature enters a battlefield under our control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. So let's say we make four 1-1 one, one tokens, then all four of those tokens and all other creatures in play will pick up four plus one plus one counters, so that can also quickly get out of hand. Virtue of Loyalty, another recent addition, can make a 2-2 knight at instant speed with the adventure, and then the five mana enchantment will put a plus one counter on each creature we control end of turn, as well as untapping those creatures. Can also be useful with some of our mana elves, potentially letting us activate Reese once again. And then we've got Elish Norn at 7 mana, giving all opposing creatures a minus 2, minus 2, so it can be an immediate board wipe, and then gives our creatures plus 2, plus 2, so that can also immediately end the game. And then a Tooth and Nail we typically want to entwine, so that's going to cost us 9 mana total, which is pretty expensive, but then it can often win the game on the spot, as we can search up two different creatures, and then put two creatures from our hand straight onto the battlefield, so we can just cheat him into play right away, and that includes cards like Moonshaker Cavalry and or Crater Hoof Behemoth, which can both give the team plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures we control, Crater Hoof gives the team Trample, whereas Cavalry gives the team Flying, so depending on the board state one could be better than the author, Cavalry a 6-6 flyer itself, whereas Crater Hoof also gets to attack with a bonus as a 5-5 with haste, so typically it tends to deal a bit more damage. And then with our Court of Calling we can also search up one of those win conditions, once again tapping some of our tokens to help pay for it thanks to Convoke. 
And then we get to the most exciting part of the deck, which are the token doubling effects. And I've also included Idyllic Tutor, which can find some of our enchantments, and Search for Glory, which can find some of our sagas, legendaries, or snow permanents. And that also includes our legendary Mondrak, a 4-4 legendary creature. Can also potentially make it indestructible if we sacrifice two other artifacts and or creatures, in addition to paying some mana and or life. And then if one or more tokens would be created under our control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. So that includes creature tokens, but also treasure tokens. And then a very similar in enchantment form, we have Anointed Procession, as well as Parallel Lives in green. And then at 5 mana, Wilds of Eldraine introduces a doubling season, which is one of my all-time favorite magic cards, not only doubling all tokens, but also doubling all counters. So that includes plus one plus one counters, but also maybe loyalty counters on our planeswalkers. So in some cases you can immediately ultimate a planeswalker the turn you play it with a doubling season out. And then a Primal Vigor is kind of the budget version of a doubling season. It also doubles tokens and it doubles plus one plus one counters, so not the loyalty counters. But the main drawback is that it's symmetrical, so it also affects the opponent, which in some matchups can be a pretty huge drawback, but still worth running since we're trying to get as many of these in play as possible. And then our final category includes a bit of removal, source to plowshares of course, very efficient, and then Conclave Tribunal with Convoke can also be cast for free most of the time by just tapping some of our untapped creatures. Wandering Emperor can exile tapped creatures or make 2-2 Samurai with Vigilance, and Ugin can also make 2-2 Spirit Tokens that can provide card advantage or destroy target permanent if that's one or more colors. And then our mana base has a few goodies, including Castle Ardenvale to make additional 1-1s, one got Aiganjo to deal damage, Poseju to deal with artifacts or enchantments, Castle Garenbrick is actually quite useful with our commander, as it can help discount the 6 mana activated ability, so it can potentially only tap 5 lands to activate it now. And then a Colony Garden enters tapped, but makes an 0-1 plant token, so that can also be very nice with some of our token doubling effects. And then plenty of dual lands for mana fixing, trying to play as many untapped ones as possible, some avoiding creature lands and some of the other legendary lands like Minas Tirith or the Shire. Our game plan is typically not to try and attack with a few creatures, get a few points of damage in, draw a card with Minas Tirith. Instead we prefer building up a huge board of tokens, avoid trading off any tokens so we can keep doubling them and make more and more until we get to the point where we can easily chum block with a few of them and then try and kill the opponent in a single attack, maybe with the help of some of our finishers. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw facing Vorinclex, and we've got the early ramp covered, a bit light on token makers perhaps. A 6-6 trample can also get past some 1-1s pretty easily. So yeah, we could be in a little bit of trouble there. But for now, play Reese. Turn 2, either into the north or Cold Steel Heart. I'll just get a, a land out of the deck. And then I'll just stay back. Could offer the trade, and they would probably just take it. But now I can also maybe block. Beanstalk Giant gets a land. So next turn we can see Vorinclex. Idyllic Tutor. Okay, that gives us some pause. So we can play Haven. And then still Idyllic Tutor over Cold Steel Heart. And then what to get? Mirari's Wake is certainly a consideration, making even more mana to set up a big March of the Multitudes, pumping the team. I think I'm leaning Cathar's Crusade. Just one nice big March of the Multitudes with Crusade in play could be good enough if they don't destroy it. And then now we can attack for one. Opponent with a tapped land, so they can't actually play Vorinclex. Nihilus Intervention, getting two more lands. So yeah, if they just uh, play Vorinclex next turn, we're good to go. If they have a Reclamation Sage, I guess Boseju also does it. Hmm, bit of a setback. So probably don't want to commit Cathars Crusade anymore, until we can make tokens at instant speed afterwards to at least get a bit of value. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, Cold Steel Heart here. Sad token noises. And then Reese can make a 1 1. Problem is, their opponent can easily keep up Boseju for 1 mana after playing Vortinclex. Hmm. 
He's got to hope they tap out at some point. Mirari's Wake. Alright, well, now we've got two powerful enchantments that they might have to deal with. So I'll start with Mirari's Wake. And then I could still cast Cathar's Crusade, or I can activate Reese. Although doubling here is the same as just activating once. So, yeah, let's just uh, pass a turn. And then if they don't destroy Mirari's Wake, it's going to be trivial to play Crusade and then a big march in the same turn. So I'm kind of happy if they don't go for Poseju here. And our opponent's being patient. So I think our plan's going to work. Immortal Sun, that's fine. Vorinclanx is getting busy. Take seven. So if we find removal for Vorinclanx, they can no longer use Boseju. We get to untap, and yeah, now we're in the clear pretty much. Cast Crusade. And then just wait for them to blow it up. These can attack, or we can use them for Convoke, which is probably better. Alright. So, um, if I use Castle, I can also maybe use that to discount Reese's ability, although things might get a little bit messy. So I'll just keep it nice and easy. So yeah, let's activate the Castle. That pays for Reese's ability. And then all the rest I can sink into March of the Multitudes. So we've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So X equals 5. Trigger Cathar's Crusade. And then... Mm, I wanted to go full control here, but I didn't hit it in time, so I could have activated Reese in response, but I'll do it now. And there we go, more Cathar's Crusade triggers, and our opponent explodes. Alright, can have a look at the battlefield here, just to admire our masterpiece. Yeah, that's a lot of tokens and a lot of plus one counters. On to the next one. Okay, we're up against Emoti, a blue-green ramp. So hoping to dodge Cyclonic Rift and Rivers Rebuke, as usual. Our hand's not bad. Turn one, a Lenor Elves or Halfling. Play a couple more one drops, turn two. I guess Halfling on the off chance that they're keeping a blue mana for Wash Away next turn. Also blocks the Elvish Mystic, but is gonna tap for Lenor Visionary. Okay, I've got a token doubler. Although I already had Mondrak. So play Elves, play Reese. And then we might just play a Tendershoot Ride next turn, get that going. And then worry about doubling the Sapperlings later. Let's see what Emoti hits. Some good ones going by. Hits a Cultivate, still pretty effective. So opponent's definitely winning the ramp race. Just gotta hope that our many tokens are better than whatever the opponent's planning. Court of Calling can also search up a win condition. Consider trading Reese for Emoti. They probably would have just taken one. A Meteor Golem destroys Thunder Shoots. And Cascades into another Ramp creature, which. They can cast a 6 mana half, that's lucky. And Cascades into Gwenna, so opponent's got all the mana they need. And we lose our Tender Shoot, which was our main token maker. Yeah, it's rough. Goes for Reese, actually, that's surprising. So we still have our Tender Shoot. I can play a Mondrak and potentially activate it to make indestructible might be more important than parallel lives. Also gives us an extra creature for Convoke. We've reached the city's blessing. 
and then we could card of calling for x equals 5 after getting two more saplings, or we could save it to maybe get a finisher like Crater Hoof Behemoth or the Moonshaker Cavalry. Our opponent still has a lot of mana between Clear Cutter, Gwenna, and the other mana elves. Just gotta hope they don't hit any blue sorceries or instants. Crab is fine. Beast Whisper, I'll allow. So there's still five mana for creatures here. And a Scrap Gorger. Okay, we might be in the clear. I don't see any reach creatures on the opponent's side of the battlefield. So, Court of Calling for eight. And one attack or summoning sick creatures. Okay. Get cavalry. And smash. And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rocco Street Chef, and we've got a pretty nice and explosive hand. Turn 1 Elves, turn 2 Reese plus Pilgrim, and then we could be staring at a very early Gruff Triplets. Another Elf, okay. So, yeah, we can do it all here. Play Pilgrim, play Mystic, play Reese. Hope her opponent doesn't have some sort of board wipe. Wouldn't expect there to be too many in a, a Rocco deck, but you never know. So is this a turn three Gruff Triplets coming up? I sure hope so. Incubation Druid, that's fine. All right, Gruff Triplets, a bomb unlimited. Let's see if it's any good and constructed. And then we're at least two turns away from a Moonshaker Cavalry. But in the meantime, we can activate Reese. A Virtue of Loyalty, also pretty decent. Is that better than just activating Reese and making two more triplets? It is close. By untapping our creatures, we can also make more mana, I suppose. Still probably going to be short of activating Reese, but triplets can attack. We'll start there. Let's try this. So I'll go full control, play Virtue of Loyalty. And then in response to the trigger, float some mana. And then, yeah, we're... Still at 5 total, so not enough to use a 6-man ability, but we can uh, make one token during the opponent's turn. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, turn 3, triplets. Pretty good. Okay, we're on the play, facing Karamonix, so a rat deck. So making a lot of 1-1 tokens can be effective in a matchup like this one. This hand is lacking some early ramp, and we don't really need Cathar's Crusade in this matchup. Just making small tokens is good enough. This hand's much better. Pilgrim sets up turn 2, Greeters plus Reese, make a token. And then we've got some more token makers to follow suit. Alright, sadly, points got to cut down. So they're not purely all rats. I guess Haven is still slightly better here. Okay, so I wanna greeters into Reese. And then it's gonna be the Battle of the Rodents with our Verdant command. The goal is eventually to rabble rousing. Okay, something powerful with Hideaway. 
We've got the mice as well, so yeah, we've got squirrels, mice, up against the rats. Lord Skitter, yeah, that's a very nice addition now as well. Rat Colony of 4-1. Actually considering trading for Reese, since I wouldn't be activating it anytime soon. And I can always replay it later. Gala Greeters is a lot more important. Okay, so next up. Could already rabble rousing, but this is better if we already have a board presence. And with Verdant Command we can even trigger greeters during the opponent's turn. So let's get the three blind mice going. Can also copy my treasure tokens for what it's worth. And then Verdant Command at instant speed. So we trigger greeters during the opponent's turn as well. Yeah, possible that trading off Reese wasn't necessary, but uh, yeah, it's fun to maybe see an alternate win with Rabble Rousing. Piper, so... Yeah, opponents found a lot of their uh, non-rat cards, or non-rat colony cards, I should say. Take the hits. Although I guess a double block on the 1-1 isn't bad here. Otherwise Piper can maybe steal some of my creatures. So, I hope that they put Galag Reaters first. Because we'll be able to put a plus one counter on it. And that's what happened. So, gain three. Make two one ones. And then we'll go treasure plus one counter. Ambush successful. And then do I keep copying my creature? I think so. That'll make a treasure. And then now might not be a bad time for Rabble Rousing. Can cast it, attack with four creatures. And then with Colony Garden we would get up to ten, so Rabble Rousing is good to go. Could of course wait another turn, but uh, getting a free Ugin sounds like a good deal. Search for glory to get something is also tempting. And this can take care of a Lord Skitter or the Piper. Although if we deal with Skitter, Piper's less likely to be a problem. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, the Proliferate deck. And with a turn 1 Halfling. Turn 2 into the north, turn 3, Mindstone. And a replicating ring can also be sped up by the proliferate. Okay, so get a snow land. And hit for one. So next turn I could Mindstone and Convoke Tribunal if they play Atraxa here. Might be worth it. Could also use Iganjo as removal, and it is possible that saving this for a Planeswalker is more important, and getting to Mindstone into Wedding Announcements is pretty nice. So sure. So next turn I could already start doubling my tokens, although against a 4-4 Flying Lifelink we'll probably need to come up with something better. Vorinclax actually prevents my wedding announcement from taking up, so that's pretty annoying. So that's gonna be our target for Tribunal. Okay, so I can leave myself with two mana to channel Iganjo, so then I can still play Voice, Conclave Tribunal, leaving a white mana untapped. Hopefully that's not too suspicious. And 
bank is all foreign clicks. Okay. Now we do get to add a counter. The ring already up to six. So hoping we get to take out Atraxa here. Kaya can uh, exile Conclave Tribunal and get their Vorinclanks back. And that's going to halt any progress on Wedding Announcement, so... Might have to block with Voice and Gunjo. Yeah, I guess that's the play here. Should probably wait until the end of combat step after Vorinclex has taken two damage, but before we go to the second main phase, in case our opponent had some removal for voice to make sure we take out Vorinclex. Legion's Landing is somewhat useful, so we can play it and then still activate Reese. Question is whether we want to attack to transform a Legion's Landing and pressure Kaya. Yeah, that does seem worth it. Opponent can block two 1-1 one, one tokens, lose Kaya. Or they can jump the 5-5, five, five, eat a 1-1, one, one, still lose one loyalty at least. And then we're gonna activate Reese before damage. We've got two of the elemental tokens now. We are at six, so very close to dead. Opponent still at 34, but hopefully the lifelinking tokens can help out. Emergent ultimatum. All right, that's probably game over now. Thanks to the replicating ring now giving them eight extra mana. Otherwise, they would have been a little bit short. Yeah, we had to deal with Vorinclex twice. Almost managed to get back into it, but I imagine our opponent's got a River's Rebuke or a Time Warp here. Time Warp, take an extra turn is lethal, so I can give him that, but Eternal Wanderer wipes my board. So, we're dead no matter what here. GG's. Put up a fight. And yeah, got to see the value of Voice of Resurgence. Can be nice against blue decks, forcing them to play at sorcery speed. But uh, once it trades, it can still leave behind a massive token. Opponent's got the Broker's Ascendancy, adding a loyalty everywhere. Make but yeah, ended up being that replicating ring. Kind of the deciding factor. So our opponent hits us for four. And a binding can clean things up altogether. Kaya pluses. Don't think Vraska activated yet. Can also add loyalty to all the Planeswalkers by proliferating. And I don't think there's any top deck that saves us. Harrow. It's not going to make the difference. Could have sacked Mindstone. Sack a land, get to basics. One shy of activating our Legion's Landing, but we'll see what our opponent does here for their last turn. I'm hoping our opponent just ultimates Vraska to win the game here. Yeah, they go for it, so 9 poison, and then they can just proliferate with Atraxa to get the 10th one. Or I guess uh, get back Vorinclex and proliferate, that also works. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ugin, the Ineffable, a colorless deck. Sadly, Ugin is good at dealing with our enchantments, and this hand doesn't have any ramp. So good, I hope to find some more early acceleration, and this certainly counts. One of the only advantages of uh, our deck versus a colorless ramp deck is that we actually get to play some of these one-mana accelerants, making our deck slightly more explosive. Okay, 
So we can play Wolf Hollow Haven here. And then still make a token with Reese. I'll just do it now. Save them some trouble. Ooh, a Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, that blows up all our tokens. So I need to somehow bait out the use of Ratchet Bomb. I guess playing Trostani will likely do so. They could also wait to take it up to one. I guess we also lose our Mox Amber. So there's a lot of stuff dying to this Ratchet Bomb. Can't think of many more effective two drops. I guess there's a Silex that's basically the same. See, I'm hoping they blow up Ratchet Bomb as soon as possible, so... I get to maybe use Battle Screech next turn. Okay, mission accomplished. So next turn I can Battle Screech, flash it back and get back on the board. Thrian Spider can get in the way of our flyers now. That's also annoying, but at least the Power Stone helps me in casting Mind Stone. And then we can Battle Screech. And flash it back. And then, let's see, next turn probably just activate Reese. Could also consider playing Emiria's Call. And, uh, let's see, we've got four, five, six. So yeah, with another land we could cast it. So, I'll just pass for now. Once our opponent plays Ugin, they can blow up Trostani. And shrink down our team. So by playing a Mirius Call, we also protect Trostani from Ugin. Find a Wandering Emperor instead. Okay, so what's our plan? Can either double my tokens, or maybe set up an attack, play Wandering Emperor to save a token from dying to the spider. Not all that exciting. And yeah, we're a little bit short of casting a Mirius Call here. So I guess doubling tokens it is. Can be a worm coil that we can actually deal with through our wandering emperor. So don't really mind seeing that. Only get to copy creature tokens, so it doesn't include the power stone. So now we could play Emiria's Call, or we can make eight birds. Two angels, eight birds. Yeah, it's kind of a tough call, but protecting the team is also part of it. And then now the birds can attack. Opponent's at 10. Opponent did not even bother blocking with the spider. Our opponent plays Maze Mind Tome to draw, so they didn't even play Ugin first, so they're definitely digging for something specific, but they couldn't find it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Azusa, a lost but seeking a green ramp deck. Can be quite scary. Our hand is... Okay, not amazing. Swords is not the best answer to Azusa. Can maybe exile something else they ramp into. So we're looking at a Cold Steel Heart, play a Trostani, and then it's going to be a while before we cast Crater Hoof. I don't think this packs enough of a punch, at least not until we can cast Crater Hoof. Okay, this uh, seems a little bit better. Turn 1 Reese, turn 2 Cold Steel Heart, turn 3 Mondrak, and then double our tokens from there. So then we just need some cheap token makers. Turn on Gracer actually, setting up a turn 2 Azusa already. There's our cheap token maker. Twilight for 2. Finding a land to Lenor Elves. And Canopy Vista currently still enters tapped. Okay. Next turn, at the very least, we can voice plus Sapperling Migration. Not sure what to get with Idyllic Tutor yet. 
There's Azusa. One extra land and a land elves. Ooh, Awaken the Woods. That's a good one. Could cast one for X equals two, making four tokens total. That will make it easier to activate Reese in future turns. Yeah, it's a shame that the Vista Enter stamped, but I'm still gonna go for it. And Moldrak can attack. Immortal Sun shuts down Planeswalkers. I'll allow it. Another attempt to dual land. But I should have the mana to tutor and then still activate Reese. And then what do we tutor for? A Rabble Rousing or Cathar's Crusade come to mind. As just ways to close out the game since we now have all the tokens we need really once we activate Reese. So yeah, Cathar's Crusade seems like it should be pretty effective. Because then we'll have a ton of extra mana to work with. Silverback Elder, that's a way to destroy enchantments. But we may only need one turn with Cathar's Crusade in play. Going after Cold Steel Heart, sure. Mana's not gonna be a concern now. It is nice when your tokens also make mana. So, Cathar's Crusade. Can play Kicked Sapperling Migration. And then still activate Reese. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we hadn't even activated Reese yet. So, let's do some math here just because we're curious. So, we've got. Uh, how many tokens in play exactly? 20. So make 40 tokens. 40 Cathar's Crusade triggers. Yeah, that's uh, I think enough for lethal next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Talion, blue-black, potentially fairies, but could just be control. Our hand is quite promising. Turn one, Sprawl. Turn two, Mindstone. So we're off to uh, an explosive start. Got our token doubler, a couple ways to make tokens. That's all you need in life. So, um, yeah, go Mindstone plus Reese. And then a way to play our token makers until after we drop parallel lives. And go for the throat is acceptable. Means the coast is clear to resolve our enchantments. And then we can play Allegiance Landing right away. Luckily, our token makers can circumvent Talion's ability to an extent. Okay, so three blind mice. And then we can still raise the alarm. Could also play Reese, get it countered again, and then still resolve three blind mice. Is that better? Yeah, maybe. That resolved. So we'll play three blind mice, see if that resolves. If it does, I don't think I attack into a potential flash creature. Way to at least transform more Legion's Landing. Siphon Insight is acceptable. If they find something that makes tokens, it's probably better on my side of the battlefield when I have a Parallel Lives and a Reese. There's no sweepers I need to worry about. I guess Elishnorn, if they get to 7 mana, is pretty backbreaking to face. They found a land. Okay. So next turn by transforming Landing, we'll easily have enough mana to activate Reese. Oof. Meat Hook Massacre for one. Yeah, that's... Uh bit of a setback. Oh, I gotta go full control. No, I wasn't able to cast Raise the Alarm before getting to copy a token. Well, I guess we get to trigger Gala Greeters now as a consolation. 
And uh, sure, we'll just do it now, maybe, to play around a counter. Is this a bounce spell as well? Vortex? Sure. So I guess we don't get to trigger greeters after all. Well, if we can beat a Meathook Massacre, that's going to be quite the feat. There's Talion. Name's one. And there's a Virtue of Loyalty. Pretty effective. Could have maybe gone full control again to be able to uh, make a knight and copy that instead. But we probably just want to cast the enchantments. The question is whether we want to transform Legion's Landing. Yeah, that seems fine. So we'll attack all out. Except for Greeters. I guess now we have enough mana for token plus Virtue of Loyalty. Unless we want to play around Spell Pierce, but yeah, let's just go for it. And then now with our Adanto, we've got a way to consistently make more tokens. So just Adanto, Parallel Lives, and Virtue of Loyalty could be enough. Siphon Insights, gotta dodge that Elish Norn. And of course, opponent could have some more sweepers, thinking of Cyclonic Rift and River's Rebuke. But nope, opponent doesn't find them and concedes, so the tokens prevail. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Corvold, a Junt Sacrifice. Our hand is decent. Turn 1 Elves, of course, always nice. Setting up a turn 2 battle. Get those tokens going for Convoke, and then we'll have to wait and see what we want to search up. Cold Steel Heart for our opponents. And a search for glory. Could get some of our token doubling enchantments. Are we courting for anything? Could court for X equals 3. Any amazing 3 drop we want to get right now. Can't think of a whole lot. Although setting up the rabble rousing would be nice. By having more creatures in general. So yeah, maybe going Reese plus court for 3. Can maybe get like a blade splicer. Could be good enough. And then next turn Rabble Rousing. And enable it right away. Ognis can make a treasure. But yeah, let's go get a Blade Splicer, unless I ended up cutting it from the deck. But nope, there it is. And the tokens got first strike, kills Ognis for free. And then next turn we've got five mana thanks to Aganjo. Play Rabble Rousing, and then hide away 5, try and find a card we can cast for free, because we'll immediately attack with 5 of our creatures at least, make 5 tokens, get up to 10 creatures total, cast a card for free. And uh, yeah, would have been potentially even game over if we find Cavalry or Crater Hoof Behemoth. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Shelob, and our hand seems keepable enough. A Reese, turn 2, join the dance, turn 3, cultivate. Turn 4 Procession, and then hope to Court of Calling for something. Now we can Mind Stone instead, that seems better. That way we can Procession and then play Join the Dance afterwards. Opponent's gonna Tutor for something. Okay, if they get a Sweeper that could hurt. Anything to destroy enchantments can also be very effective against our build. So I could already play Anointed Procession, and then next turn we can double spell Join the Dance, Cultivate. Sure. Join the Dance makes four tokens for two mana, so it's helping us with setting up a bigger Court of Calling. So yeah, let's uh, join the Dance. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So X equals 5 on the chord. Could get like a Tender Shoot Dryad. Although that's pretty scary if they turn it into a food. Maybe get Mondrak, and I can even make it indestructible. As another token doubler. And then, yeah, next turn we can activate Reese. And that's going to be pretty effective. Could also just keep developing my mana. And then Court of Calling for a finisher like Craterhoof Behemoth. I think the Cultivate Path might be better in case your opponent has removal for Reese, which they're pretty likely to have. Because otherwise, if our opponent takes out our commander, I don't get to double my tokens, and getting Mondrak is not quite as exciting. Whereas now, we just need to have a couple random tokens in play to win the game with Cord. Spider Queen's a good one. And a Tribunal could answer the Queen, or we can just attack her. So, we have options. I can currently Cord for a total of nine, so I could already get a Crater Hoof. Just wouldn't leave many untapped creatures. Just gonna play Signet. And, uh, yeah, let's attack Spider Queen with three tokens. And pass it back. And then next turn we should be able to get a Crater Hoof for the win. And there's Shelob. And yeah, let's just cord for eight. Since they have some reach creatures, I think we prefer the trample from Crater Hoof. And a nice beefy attack. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing white mana. Do have a couple token doublers. Opponents also tokens deck with Jetmere. So Primal Vigor is probably one of our worst cards in the matchup. So yeah, let's take a mulligan. This I can get behind. It's not the best, a bit light on mana acceleration. But uh, yeah, I guess we can wait on playing Reese. Turn to either Haven or make a 2-2 Knight. Okay, drew our primal vigor. It's not what we wanted. Intangible virtue, that's fine. And three blind mice. Sure, we'll get that going. Can play Reese. And then even if they remove my mouse, I could still copy a knight that we can play at instant speed. But hopefully we get to play a Thunder Shoot Ride, followed by a Cathars Crusade. Bold Reese, that's fine. Could still draw, see what we pick up. Alright, now that we found a land, I'm just gonna play a 5-drop, otherwise copying the knight would have been maybe the play. So attack with a 1-1, one, one, play Thunder Shoot. I guess our opponent could flash in some tokens, so maybe I should hang back. Because their tokens are pretty large with a Virtue. And raise the alarm, yep. Okay, so we've got our Thunder Shoot going, and then a Cathars Crusade could be lovely. Thunder Shoot makes two tokens per turn cycle, so it's going to give us more counters than a Virtue of Loyalty just by itself. Alright, fair enough. Arya deals with Thunder Shoot, at least we still have our other tokens. And a Battle Screech. Copy Sapperling, maybe. But yeah, I'm lacking the Crusade and then Screech flashback. And Restoration is acceptable. Okay, let's go for it. Our tokens do have Vigilance, but I think I still do this before attacking. 
and the our opponent has seen enough. Make two more tokens, bunch more plus one counters, put super far behind on board, and then we can keep adding more counters as we play more creatures afterwards. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tamiyo, Collector of Tales. So against any blue deck, always have to have those Rivers Rebukes and uh, Cyclonic Rifts in the back of your head. But uh, still gonna keep it and hope to maybe get there before they can cast them. So for now, could get Battle of Bratagard going or Wedding Announcement, maybe better. And then next turn we'll make sure to play our commander. So battle makes a human warrior and an elf warrior. These are just regular humans, could be relevant for the final chapter. So play our commander. Play a battle for Bretagard. Tails end, sure. Don't really mind. And then playing the token maker. Still good when we have a convoke card in hand, so it seems better than just playing a cold steel heart. This makes regular soldiers, they don't have a race, so it's different from the other creatures we have in play. And is it time to convoke? I think we wait until after we double our tokens, maybe? But that's a close call. So we could play Reese, play Cold Steel Hearts. Sure. Our opponent did not play Tamiya, so they've got something else planned. Probably still okay to attack. Draw a card with announcements. Get to pump our team. And a behold, end of turn to draw two. Time Warp take an extra turn, alright. So if they've got a Rivers Rebuke, they can cast it. Time you can also get back Time Warp at some point. Discover the formula. Well, we've got one turn to do some damage. So I can draw. History. So this is going to make extra tokens. They want to march of the multitudes right now. So if I march for two, we get to copy that token, so might as well just wait for this to happen. And then I can still activate Reese afterwards. And uh, playing the elf is basically free when it comes to Convoke. So I won't be attacking here in the hopes of setting up a lethal army. And then if our opponent's got something to bounce everything, we're probably dead, so might as well main phase everything to play around a counter spell. And X equals how much exactly? So this needs to tap for mana. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I think this maximizes our token output. Alright, let's see if they've got a River's Rebuke or Cyclonic Rift to make me sad gaze. So now they're a little bit short of casting. Rebuke, unless it got a discount from Discover the Formula, I guess. Flash it back. So they are digging. And draw a card. And an Uro, that's not gonna save them. Unless they've got some uh, fog effects to prevent combat damage. Which sometimes is paired with Tamiyo, but nope, opponent doesn't have anything. And this is gonna be more than enough. Alright, so we get to see our green-white tokens in action. And the deck's a ton of fun, especially if you can dodge sweepers or those mass bounce spells bouncing all your tokens back which is definitely one of the weak points of this strategy. But against most other creature decks, you can usually go over the top once you start doubling tokens turn after turn. So definitely recommend it if you happen to have all of these cards already. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. 
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.